Hi and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to be proving this result. And we'll start by proving for the mean of sample means. And that's that if a random variable x is normally distributed with a mean of mu, then the sampling distribution of the sample means will also be normally distributed and have the same mean mu. Okay. So let's assume we have a random variable x which is normally distributed with a mean mu and a variance of sigma squared. Where there are some things you should know about this distribution. Namely that we can write a list of the variables that x can take on using the following list. x sub 1, x sub 2, all the way up to x sub i. Where each observation is an independent random variable that is also normally distributed with the same mean mu and variant sigma squared as the original random variable capital X. For example, X sub one is also normally distributed with a mean mu and a variant sigma squared. Now, in order to prove this result for the means, we need to know some rules about expectation algebra and what they are are algebraic properties that can be very useful for calculations that involve measures of central tendency and spread, such as the mean and variance. Now, one you've seen in a previous tutorial, which I'll link below, is this one here. That the expected value of a constant a multiplied by a random variable x is equal to a times by the expected value of the random variable x. Now, the second rule is also a well-known rule called the linearity of expectation and it's that the expectation of a sum of random variables is equal to the sum of the expectations of the individual variables okay and this is a really useful result because in statistics we're often interested in the expected value of a sum for example the sum of numbers when you roll two fair six-sided dice or the sum of cards in a game of blackjack so let's start this proof by defining x bar to be the sample mean of n independent observations where n is equal to the sample size. Well then, x bar must be equal to the sum of n observations divided by n. And this sample mean would give you a value which is based off of the different values that you happen to choose in your sample and also the sample size n, okay? Now we should know that the mean mu of x bar is the same as the expected value of x bar. And therefore, the expected value of x bar is equal to the expected value of the sum of n independent observations divided by n. Now dividing this sum by n is the same as multiplying the sum by one over n. So by using property one, since n is a constant value, we can take this n out and say that this is equal to one over n times by the expected value of the sum of n independent observations. Using property two, we can rewrite the expected value of the sum as the sum of expected values as follows, okay? So here we just have one over n multiplied by the sum of expected values. As I mentioned before, each of these observations that come from the random variable x will also be normal and have the same mean mu. And therefore the expected values of each of these observations will be equal to mu, giving us one over n times by mu plus mu plus mu and so on. And since we took the expected value of n observations, we'll be adding mu to itself n times. So this would be equal to one over n times n times by mu. And here we get cancelling of the n terms, giving us a value of mu, which proves the result that the mean of the sample means is equal to the population mean. Let's now prove that the variance of sample means is equal to sigma squared over n if the variance of the population distribution is equal to sigma squared. So for this proof, we're going to use the following well-known results in expectation algebra. The first one you will have seen in a previous tutorial, which I'll also link below. That the variance of a constant a times by the random variable x is equal to a squared times by the variance of the random variable x. 
and the second rule is called the linearity of variance that the variance of the sum of random variables is equal to the sum of variances of each individual random variable now in order for this equation to hold the condition that must be satisfied is that each of these variables must be independent this wouldn't work if the variables were dependent okay so for this proof let's go ahead and use the same definition that we used previously for x bar to be the sample mean of n independent observations where n is again the sample size now this isn't often highlighted but for this result it's always assumed that the sampling method is with replacement we take a sample from the population we learn about it and then we put it back into the population before taking another random sample and this allows us to assume that the observations are independent as defined earlier x bar would be equal to the sum of n independent observations divided by the sample size n so let's define the variance of x bar sigma squared sub x bar to be equal to the variance of x bar well then the variance of x bar is equal to the variance of what we've just defined the sum of n independent observations divided by n now using property one we can take one over n out of this expression but when we do that we have to square it okay so we get one over n all squared times by the variance of the sum of n independent observations since we have the variance of the sum and we've already assumed these observations to be independent it means that the variance of the sum is equal to the sum of the variances and so using property 2 we get that this is equal to 1 over n squared times by the variance of x sub 1 plus the variance of x sub 2 all the way up to the variance of x sub n and since these observations come from the population distribution the variance of each of these observations would be equal to sigma squared so we get that this is equal to 1 over n squared multiplied by sigma squared plus sigma squared and so on and since we took the variance of n observations we'll be adding sigma squared to itself n times which gives us 1 over n squared multiplied by n times by sigma squared and here we will get cancelling of one lot of n terms giving us sigma squared over n which proves our result for the variance of the sample means and since the standard deviation is the square root of the variance the standard deviation will be the square root of this term and therefore the standard deviation sigma sub x bar would be equal to sigma divided by the square root of n okay in the next tutorial we'll be using this result in the hypothesis testing for normal distributions until then keep up the good work and i'll see you soon if you like this video please give us a thumbs up leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos